Hey everyone, this is Vin with Agony Gaming, and today I'm going to show you my Condition Mancer build. Now one thing that's important to mention before I show you any of my stats, conditions are somewhat handicapped. And what I mean by this is that they can only stack up to 25 per mob. What this means is, is if you're in a group with another condition-oriented profession, if you toss a bleed on a target, it can only stack up to 25. Now whether that 25 comes from you, or comes from someone else, or a mix of the two, could mean that you're limiting the damage that you can do on your character. If they stacked more bleeds or whatever, uh, it means that you stacked less, and therefore you'll be doing less damage. However, since Necromancers are a condition-oriented class, I still find this build to be very viable in dungeons, and a lot of fun to play, so hopefully you'll enjoy it as well. To start off, I'm going to go ahead and show you my gear here. I use Rabid Gear, and what that is is Precision, Toughness, and Condition Damage. Now I use this in all six of my main armor slots with a superior Rune of the Undead. That rune gives you additional condition damage and toughness, as well as 5% toughness, or 5% of your toughness becomes condition damage once you have all six in there. As you can see, I also use the same thing for all of my accessories. With the accessories that are slottable, I use an exquisite coral jewel, which adds rampage or stats, precision, condition damage, and power. And with my ascended gear, I use 5 agony resistance. Now I'm also using rabbit, or I'm sorry, rampager stats for my weapons. In my staff, you can see that it's power, precision, and condition damage as well. Same with my scepter. In both my scepter and my staff, I'm using a superior sigil of earth, which adds a 60% chance on critical to inflict bleeding. My dagger, however, uses a superior sigil of fire, and that gives you a 30% chance on critical to trigger a flame blast for AOE damage. Next I'll go into my traits. I run a 0 30 20 20 0 build. 30 into curses. First I'll choose number 2 for hemophilia, which gives you a 20% increased bleeding duration. Then number 9 for focus rituals. Well skills will use ground targeting. And number 11, lingering curse, which makes it to where conditions inflicted by scepter skills last 33% longer. In Death Magic, I go with number 4, Ritual of Protection, which makes it to Wells apply protection for 3 seconds when you cast. And number 2, Greater Marks, increases the area of marks, and marks become unblockable. I also use Dagger Mastery, which makes my skills recharge 15% faster. And number 8, Ritual Mastery, which makes your Wells recharge 20% faster. Now as you can tell from my traits, the primary weapon that you'll be using is the dagger focus, or I'm sorry, a scepter dagger combination. However, staff is a great alternative for long range. So let me go ahead and first cover kind of how you play a necromancer. Um, when you're playing a necromancer, almost everything you do applies conditions, but it also is a small sacrifice to yourself. Oftentimes you'll find yourself, you're stacking conditions on yourself as well. This isn't necessarily a bad thing because these conditions can be taken off easily and transferred to foes with the number 4 ability, both with the scepter dagger combo and the uh, staff combo. As you can see, the number 4 that I'm talking about with the staff is Putrid Mark, and that transfers conditions from allies to foes whenever that is triggered. As I had mentioned also, you see the larger marks here from the traits. They are much larger than what the area ground target shows. Keep that in mind when you're casting them. So another thing to show you here, uh, my utility skills. For my heal, I use consume conditions. This is another way to get rid of the conditions on yourself. Uh, the base healing of this is 5,400. However, it'll heal for an additional 744 per condition if you have conditions on you. Next, I use Well of Suffering, which makes it to where target area pulses, damaging foes and inflicting vulnerability. This helps out your group members a lot, allowing them to do more damage, as well as uh, doing damage yourself. Uh, well of Corruption makes it to where the target area pulses, converting boons on foes into conditions. And Well of Darkness makes the target area pulse again, blinding foes with each pulse. 
Now your elite skill is the one that you're going to be swapping out. For now, I've got Lich Form. This is great for single target and boss mobs. However, when you're up against trash mobs, I would recommend using Plague. This is going to make it to where you turn into a virulent cloud, and it'll inflict multiple conditions on foes that you touch. Entering this form also destroys all minions and removes spectral effects. When you go into Lich Form, or when you go into the Spectral Cloud, you'll get an additional uh, skill bar and you'll have additional skills to look at. So let me go ahead and try and show you some of those real quickly. For starters, in Lich Form, you get Death Claws. You get Mark of Death, which inscribes a mark on a foe, making them vulnerable. You get Chilling Wind, which chills them and pushes them back. Mark of Horror makes you spawn some Jagged Horrors when it's triggered. And Grim Scepter, or Grim Spectre. It sends out a claw that explodes on impact, ripping boons off foes and curing conditions on allies. Now while that's on cooldown, let me explain a couple other things to you real quickly. Your F1 ability is called Death Shroud. For those of you that haven't played a Necromancer, this is a great way to get out of a tough spot. It's an additional life bar and it also has a life drain that does a lot of damage. So don't be afraid to use your Death Shroud. If you don't need it uh, to get out of a tight spot, it's a great way to do some additional damage and it's also a nice ranged attack. While we're waiting on that cooldown, I'm going to go ahead and show you the Scepter Dagger skill. As mentioned earlier, the number 4 is the same way as it is on the staff. Number 4 is going to make you blind multiple foes, but it'll transfer 3 conditions to your target on a successful attack. So the best opportunity to use this and number 3 are when you have all of your conditions stacked on your targets. Number 4 will transfer your conditions but number three is going to do more damage the more conditions that the target has on them. Number two and number five are also area skills. You'll notice that they are much larger than what the circle portrays. And what those skills do is they'll summon skeletal hands to cripple foes in the target area and inflict weakness and bleeding on the foes in the target area as well. So ideally when you go out to cast these conditions, you're casting Cripple, Bleeding, more Bleeding and Weakness, some Vulnerability, and some Blindness. Once you get all of these conditions on them, unleash number 3 for a large hit and hopefully a critical strike as well. As you can see here with this particular build, I end up with 57% crit chance. So we're about 30 seconds away from being able to do Lich Form. I'll show it to you after I attack a mob. Uh, going up against a single mob, you won't be using it, so therefore I won't really have a chance to show it to you in combat, but I will still explain it after we take out this Risen Corruptor. So we'll go ahead and start out with a Cripple. So as you can see there, the target went down fairly fast, probably not as fast as some other targets, and this may change depending on how many condition professions you have in your particular party. Let me show you real quickly the Plague build, and then we'll be done for the day. Again, as mentioned earlier, Plague puts you in a new form, and it gives you three new skills. These skills will apply Bleeding, Blindness, or Cripple in the target area that you can see on the ground around me. So there you have it, that's my Condition Mancer build. If you have any questions, feel free to comment on the video or contact me in game. As always, thank you for watching and please subscribe to us for this video and more. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter at AGNY Gaming.